the Lux Radio Theater. Great dramatic program with the stage and screen's most famous stars. Tonight's star, Zazu Pitts. Supported by Gene Lockhart, featured comedian of stage and screen. Zazu Pitts, the most bewildered star in Hollywood. The incomparable comedian who gave you so many hearty laughs in Mrs. Wiggs of the Cabbage Patch, Ruggles of Red Gap, and her latest picture, Alone Together. Gene Lockhart, whose comedy you've enjoyed in many such pictures as his current successes, Star at Midnight, and Storm Over the Andes. The play for this evening, Dulcie, Dulcie. Riotous George Kaufman, Mark Connolly comedy. Great Broadway success. The story of a well-meaning wife who tries to aid her husband's business career and gets herself into a series of hilarious tragedies. And the sponsor, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap. I know you all think you give your skin the right care, but are you sure you do? There's only one way to tell, and that is by results. So many women find Lux Toilet Soap brings the results they want. Keep skin soft, smooth, and clear that we hope you'll try it too. You'll like Lux Toilet Soap's active lather, its gentleness, its fragrance. Lux Toilet Soap is the complexion care nine out of ten screen stars use. Millions of other lovely women use it too. That's why it's priced so reasonably that anyone can buy it. And here's Mr. Garrick to tell you about the play. In tonight's play, you will hear Miss Zesu Pitts in the part of Dulcinea Smith, a high-spirited but rather giddy young married woman. Dulcinea, called Dulcie for short, has always had an overwhelming urge to be of assistance in the business affairs of her hard-working husband. And with her usual uncanny knack of doing the wrong thing at the wrong time, has invited a house full of guests to spend the weekend. Mr. Gene Lockhart will be heard in the role of Charles Forbes, whom Dulcie has invited with the hope that he will further her husband's financial interests. The first guest to arrive is her brother, Willie. And as our curtain rises, we find him alone in the well-furnished living room, idly turning over the pages of the evening newspaper. The door opens to admit Gordon Smith, Dulcie's husband. Good evening, Bill. Oh, hello, Gordon. Been here long? Oh, about an hour. Kind of hot in town, so I thought I'd come out early. Of course. Glad you did. I don't suppose Dulcie's home yet? No, the butler said she was across the street someplace. Mrs. Kennedy's, I think. Oh, yes, the regular Friday afternoon ladies' club. Gosh, but I'm tired tonight. Had a hard day at the office. How's the artificial jewelry business, if any? Well, it's looking up a bit, Bill. Mm. Anything new on Forbes' merger? It's coming along. I hadn't said anything, Gordon, but I, uh... I rather felt you were up against it when I saw you last week. Thanks, old man. I was a bit. You'll be all right if this new deal goes through? Yes, I think so. I have to get 16 and two-thirds percent of the stock of the combine. Oh, you think that's enough? 16 and two-thirds? No, it isn't. But I'm up against it. I've got to take what he gives me or have that crowd to fight. Forbes is a tough customer. That's hard luck. Of course, I may be able to do something with him over the weekend... He's coming out here, you know. Yes, so I understand. Uh, bringing his wife a- a- and daughter, too, isn't he? Yes. I didn't know you knew them that well. Well, I don't, except Forbes in a business way. I wasn't keen for it, but Dulcie thought it would be nice to have them. And, well, you know how your sister is about those things. Yeah. When she makes up her mind to do something, there's no stopping her. Oh, hello, Willie. Hello, Dulcie. Gordon, darling, how are you? All right, dear. My, did you have a hard day at the office? Well, not bad. Oh, my, it's nice and cool in here, isn't it? I always say if there's any breeze at all, we get it in this room. A ring for Henry, will you, darling? I want him to fix these flowers. Yes, dear. <laughs> Aren't they pretty, Willie? Right out of my own garden. Yes, they're swell, sis. And we're having guests for the weekend, Willie. Very important guests. And I want the place to look just right. Who do you think's coming? Yeah, don't tell me now. Uh, the Forbes. Why, Willie, how did you know? Oh, someone must have told you. Yes, the Forbes. Mr. and Mrs. Forbes and Angela. (laughs) My, isn't it strange, Gordon, that Mrs. Forbes is only ten years older than her daughter? (laughs) What? Yes. Huh? Of course, she's not really Angela's mother, dear. She's her stepmother. Mr. Forbes' second wife, you know. Oh, she's so nice, Willie. And Angela... 
Well, Angela's just a darling. Yes, isn't she? Uh, Willie, what do you mean? You don't know her. Of course I do. I've known her for years. Well, <laughs> isn't that funny? What's funny about it, Dulcie? Nothing, except that I never knew he knew her, that's all. Oh, here you are, Henry. Uh, did you ring, Mrs. Smith? Yes, take those flowers out and cut the stems, please. Very good, madam. And when you see Madeline, tell her to fix up the little green room for tonight. Yes, madam, I'll tell her at once. The green room? Who's that for, Dulcie? <laughs> You'll see, dear. You mean there's someone else coming? Of course, darling. Who? Oh, you'll never guess. I don't even want to try. Now, who is it, Dulcie? Skylar Van Dyke. Skylar Van Dyke? One of the Van Dykes, and he's worth millions. Skylar Van Dyke's coming here? Yes. Isn't it wonderful? He's a marvelous man, and you ought to hear him play the piano. You'd never think he was a Van Dyke. He's so democratic. Where the devil did you meet him? Oh, several places. And this afternoon, he was at Mrs. Kennedy's and played for us. He had a lot of invitations, and he accepted mine. But, my dear, having this man here with Forbes, now, how do we know they like each other? Uh, they will. Mr. Van Dyke's a businessman, too, darling. He owns all kinds of things, railroads and railroads. I think some of them are. He'll help entertain Mr. Forbes with them. But Forbes isn't the kind of man that wants to be entertained. That's just it. Uh, darling, leave Mr. Forbes to me. I've got a real surprise for you. Another one? A wonderful one, just for you. Yeah, one thing Dulcie never learned is the difference between a surprise and a shock. You shut up, Willie. Okay, I'm shut. I think I'll go upstairs and wash up a little. That's right, dear. I want you to look nice for our guest. See you later. Now, Dulcie, what is this surprise you have for me? Has it anything to do with Forbes? Yes, darling, and it's something that's going to help you a great deal with Mr. Forbes. Oh, dear, I must tell Henry there'll be two more for dinner. Two more? Then there's still another one coming, besides Van Dyke? Yes. What are you trying to do, solve the housing problem? Just wait, darling. You'll be so excited. Vincent is coming. Vincent? Vincent? Who the devil is Vincent? Uh, Vincent Leach. You know, the big moving picture writer. Oh, yes. Is he coming here? Yes. Isn't it wonderful? I'm not so sure. Now, why do you want to mix this man Leach up with Ford? Oh, that's a secret. Well, I, I don't like secrets. This isn't a game. I promise you won't tell? Cross your heart? Yes, yes. Well, then, Vincent and Angela like each other. You mean Forbes' daughter? Yes. Isn't it wonderful? So I invited them both here so they'll have the whole weekend together. You never can tell what'll happen. But, Dulcie, dear, you don't know Angela so well. And this man Leach. What do you know about him? I know all about him. He's a big scenario writer and just the man for Angie. But why are you so anxious to match this fellow Leach with Angela? What do you care about him? Don't you see? No. Can't you guess? No. Well, if Angie likes Mr. Leach and marries him... Yes? And I fix it. Well? <laughs> well, I'm your wife. Now, Dulcie, dear. That will make Mr. Forbes so grateful that he'll have to give you more than 16 and two-thirds of the percentage. Good heavens, Dulcie. I figured it all out myself. But, uh, but, now, now, wait. Uh, Gordon, but... darling, don't be upset about it. I know they ought to marry. I just know it. It's a woman's intuition. Just as I knew I ought to marry you, dear, it was because I loved you, darling, and wanted to help you, and... Yes, yes, and you do help me, but... You don't understand, dear. Now, try and see my position. All I can see is that Mr. Forbes is taking advantage of you, and I'm not going to let him, that's all. But that isn't the point. In the position that I'm in, I have to go ahead with it. I wouldn't want anything to happen. Uh, don't you see, dear, if I'm not in that merger, I lose everything. Only 16 and two-thirds percent. It's such a funny number, too. I don't see why you couldn't get a nice even number like 25 or 50. Now, Dulcie, you must listen. Now, now, not another word. Just let, uh, let sleeping dogs lie and everything is bound to come out all right. It always does. Excuse me, Mrs. Smith. Uh, yes, Henry. Uh, Mr. Skyler Van Dyke is here, ma'am. Oh, show him in, Henry. Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, Gordon, isn't it thrilling? A real Van Dyke in our home. Uh, will you step in here, sir? Thank you. Ah, oh, good evening, Mrs. Smith. Uh, good evening. I see you found your way all right. Oh, yes. <laughs> I guess you're like me. You've got a bump of location. <laughs> uh, this is my husband, Mr. Van Dyke. Mr. Smith, how do you do? I'm very pleased to know you, Mr. Van Dyke. Hey, Dulcie, I... Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, that's all right. Come in, Willie. 
I want you to meet Mr. Van Dyke, my brother Willie, Mr. Van Dyke. How do you do? How do you do? And Mr. Van Dyke's going to stay the weekend, aren't you, Mr. Van Dyke? Thank you, but I, I hope I'm not intruding. Why, not at all. Intruding? I should say not. Well, it's very kind of you, but may I accept with a proviso? Why, certainly. It's barely possible that some business matters will call me back to town. Now, in that event, I hope you'll pardon me. Of course. We all understand business here, don't we, Gordon? Mm -hmm. A business before a pleasure. <laughs> You're awfully good. Uh, Willie, would you show Mr. Van Dyke his room? It's the one next to yours. Of course. This way, Mr. Van Dyke. Thank you very much. I shall rejoin you presently, Mrs. Smith. Dinner at 8.20, Mr. Van Dyke. Thank you. Well, how do you like Mr. Van Dyke? Nice, isn't he? He's all right, I guess. Wait till you hear him play the piano. A lovely touch and so soulful. Oh, my. Oh, Henry, what is it, Henry? Mr. and Mrs. Forbes, madam, and Miss Angela Forbes. Oh, good heavens, they're here already and I'm a sight. A positive sight. Henry, show them in and say I'll be down directly. That's very good, madam. Quick, Gordon. We've got to go upstairs. We look terrible. Who does? I look all right. Oh, no, you don't. You haven't even washed your face. You can't greet Mr. Forbes with a dirty face. Come along now. But, Dulcie... Don't stop to argue. We'll go through the dining room so they won't see us. Oh, gosh, Dulcie, I wish you wouldn't... Hurry, be... dear, hurry. Uh, will you come this way, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, come along, Eleanor. <laughs> yes, dear. Oh, what a lovely room. Isn't it, Angela? Yes, the whole place is lovely. Mm, looks like we came too early. Oh, no, sir. Uh, Mrs. Smith asked me to say that she'd be down directly. Oh, all right. Thank you. Uh, not at all, madam. Uh, excuse me, please. Mm. Well, a nice reception. Now, please, Charlie. Oh, don't be a bear, Father. Try to be pleasant for once. Pleasant? Why should I? I didn't want to come here in the first place. I could have done my business with Smith in New York. I know, dear, but a nice weekend down here in the country? Weekend? Weekend? What do I care about a weekend? I'm a businessman, not a playboy. You know I despise golf and tennis and all that sort of truck. Well, I couldn't help it, Charlie. Mrs. Smith was so insistent, I couldn't refuse her. Uh... Well, we're here now, Father, and you might as well make the best of it. I didn't care so much about coming myself, if you want to know. Oh, you didn't? No, not particularly. I'd rather stay in town. Yes, where you could see that, that half-baked moving picture writer, I suppose. What? Why, Father, oh, I... I know all about it. You've been seeing him almost every day. And I don't like it. You hear? I don't like it at all. Why not, Father? Mr. Leach is a very nice young man. Mr. Leach is a young fool. How can you say that? You've never even met him. No, but I've heard about him, and that was enough for me. Oh, Charlie, please don't excite yourself. You know it's bad for you. Uh, now, come over here and sit down. No, I won't. I'll sit down right here. I don't like those soft chairs anyway. They're bad for my back. Uh... Well, come in here, Mr. Van Dyke. Thank you. What? Why, Bill! Well, if it isn't Angela. Hi, Angela. I'm all right, Bill. I... This is my father, Bill Parker, father. How do you do, sir? How are you? My wife, Mr. Parker. How do you do? How do you do? This is Mr. Van Dyke, Mr. Yes. and Mrs. Forbes, and Angela Forbes. How, How do you do? do? <clears throat> are you Mr. Schuyler Van Dyke of New York? Yes, I am. Well, I'm certainly glad to know you. Thank you. I believe I know something of your interests. In fact, I just missed meeting you last week at the International Metals Conference. Yes, well, I've heard of you also, Mr. Forbes, and I hope we can have a little chance to talk down here. I'm very much interested in the artificial jewelry business. Are you? Well, well that, that's fine. Here they are, Gordon. Hurry, dear. I'm coming. Oh, Mrs. Forbes, I'm so sorry if have kept you waiting. Oh, it's quite all right. And, Mr. Forbes, how are you? I'm pretty well. And Angela, how are you, Mrs. Smith? Oh, Gordon, introduce everybody, will you? Yes, of course. All right, Gordon, I've done it already. Oh, how nice of you, Willie. Angela, my dear, I've such a surprise for you, such a surprise. Oh, what, Mrs. Smith? You'll see, dear, you'll see. Oh, Mr. Ford, huh? I'm glad you could get on early. I'd like to talk over something with you that... Now, now, Gordon, no business, please. But does No, dear, this is the time for play. You know, Mr. Forbes, the one thing poor Gordon has never learned to do is to play. He takes everything so seriously. Mm. Now, what I like to do is to cut loose once in a while. Just be children again, mm. don't you, Mrs. Forbes? Oh, yes, indeed. Away from everything. <laughs> yes, that's the way I feel. And I've got the most wonderful day planned out for you tomorrow, Mr. Ford. Eh? You're going to play and play and play. Me? Well, uh, thank you very much, but you know that oh, I... Oh, but you play golf, don't you? Well, I, uh, uh, thank you. It's been a long time since... You'll love our course. It's wonderful. Yes, but I've been having a great deal of trouble with my back lately. Oh, and I... really? 
Well, that's too bad. What you need is exercise. Huh? Now, you just go out and play 18 holes of golf with Mr. Van Dyke the first thing in the morning. Uh, but, my dear Mrs. Smith... Excuse I... me, Mrs. Smith. Yes, Henry. Yes, Henry. What is it? Another guest is here, madam. And Mr... Oh, wait, wait. Oh, wait, uh, don't tell us his name. Just show him in, Henry. Uh, very good, ma'am. Angela. Yes, Mrs. Smith? This is a surprise. I was telling you about Angela. Oh, who is it? You'll see in a moment, dear. Yes, I'll see. Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Smith. Oh, good heavens. How do you do? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Vincent Lee, the great moving picture writer. What? Well, for... Yes, Mr. Ford, Mr. Vincent Lee. Oh, do you do, Mr. Ford? How do you do? And this is Mrs. Ford. How do you do? And Mr. Van Dyke, my How husband. How do you do? And my brother, Willie. How do you do? <laughs> and of course, you know Angela. Angela? Why, this is a surprise. Oh, yes. <laughs> Isn't it, Mr. Lee? I, I didn't know you were going to be here. Neither did I. What's that, Mr. Ford? Nothing, Mrs. Smith, nothing at all. Oh, I thought you said something. Oh, Mr. Leach, I'm so glad you could come. He's been so busy, Mrs. Forbes, working on a new picture. Uh, tell us about it, Mr. Leach. Well, I'm afraid I can't. Uh, just now. It's a little long. Perhaps after dinner. Oh, yes, of course. But I may say, without exaggeration, that it will probably be the most magnificent picture of its type ever produced. Oh, how wonderful. Yes, even better than the sacred love. Uh, I suppose everyone here saw the sacred love. Yes. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, then, you all know how good that was. And my next is going to be even better. Need I say more? No. Huh? I beg your pardon, Mr. Ford. Oh, Dulcie, uh, don't you think we might play bridge or something? Until dinner, I mean. Uh, yes, Gordon, that's a very good idea. Now, let's see. Uh, you play bridge, don't you, Mr. Ford? No, Mrs. Smith, I do not. Oh, yes, you do. You're just modest. Huh? We'll play out in the sun porch. It's nice and cool there. Oh, uh, but I don't suppose Mr. Leach and Angela would care to play, would you? Well, if it's all the same to you, Mrs. Smith. <laughs> I understand, Mr. Leach. Why don't you and Angela go for a little walk? There's such nice scenery around here. Oh, well, I don't... I... Oh, all right. Shall we, Mr. Lee? Delighted, my dear. Come along. Thank you. Excuse us, please, everyone. What a surprise, Angela. Oh, dear. Don't they make a nice couple? Yes, lovely. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mrs. Smith, I'd like to go and put my car away. Uh, certainly, Mr. Forbes. Gordon, go and help Mr. Forbes. Of course. Wait, Mr. Forbes. I'll show you where to put it. Now, Bill, you can come outside and help me set up the bridge table. Okay, Dulcie. And, Mr. Van Dyke, will you stay and entertain Mrs. Forbes for a moment? Certainly. It'll be a pleasure. Oh, thank you. This way, Bill. We're going to play out in the sun porch, you know. Right behind you, sis. Well, I suppose I ought to go and change before dinner. Oh, no, I... no please don't go, Mrs. Forbes. I've, I've been wanting to have a chat with you. I've been hearing all about you this afternoon. All about me? Yes. From whom? From Mrs. Smith. Oh, so, you see, I was prepared to be interested even before I met you. And now the disappointment. <laughs> Far from it. I find you even more interesting than I had anticipated. Well, uh, thank you. Now, oh, tell me, Mrs. Forbes, you've been married just a short time, haven't you? Oh, not so short. Four years. Why? Oh, no reason, but you look so much younger than your husband, and he's so very jealous of you. Why, Mr. Van Dyke, what makes you think so? Mrs. Smith told me. Oh. Uh, have you know, did I leave the keys to the... Uh... Oh, I beg your pardon. Why, Charlie, what's the matter? Nothing. I just can't find the keys, that's all. Oh. Well, I, I think I'll go out on the terrace. See you later, Mrs. Ford. Well, what did that mean? What, Charlie? Isn't it enough to have Angela go prancing off with that brainless, conceited motion picture jackass? Then you, sitting in here, spooning with Van Dyke. Why, Charlie, how can you say such a thing? Good heavens, didn't I see it? But, Charlie, dear... I, I tell you, this whole place is driving me crazy. Did you hear what that woman said? I've got to get up tomorrow morning and play golf. Golf. <laughs> if there's one thing I hate more than anything else, it's golf. Unless it's bridge or moving pictures. <laughs> if I could think of a good excuse, I'd go back to town tonight. Yes, and take Angela and you with me. But, Charlie, you can't do that. Don't you suppose I see that woman's plans? To throw Angela and that, that film thing together? But I tell you, he's the most charming man. Yes, and I tell you that if it weren't for Smith and our business relations, I would go back tonight. Oh, oh here uh... you are. We've been waiting for you, Mr. Ford. Mrs. Smith, I don't think I care to play bridge tonight. Now, now, you businessmen must have some relaxation. You remind me so of Gordon, the poor darling. He does nothing but work. 
I don't suppose he's told you, Mr. Forrest, that he's really got a lot of things on hand. Huh? Why, uh, what do you mean? You might just as well know. It isn't only the pearl business. He has lots of other interests, too. What? What's that? It's really asking too much to make him give up all these things to come into the jewelry merger. Huh? That is, unless it was made worth his while. But, uh... Of course, if he only got 16 two-thirds percent, he couldn't afford to give up all his time to it. Oh, no. He'd have to look after his other interests, too, and you'd be the loser. Oh, I see. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Are you coming, Mrs. Ford? Mm. Yes, Mrs. Smith. Hurry, then, dear. We're going to start the game. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's the way the land lies. Well... Oh, hello, Miss Forbes. All alone? Yes, Mr. Smith, and I'd like to have a word with you. Why, of course. Smith, your wife has just been telling me something of your other business activities. Other business activities? Yes, and it came to me as something of a revelation. But I don't understand. Well, as you may be aware, my agreement to admit you on a a 16 and two-thirds basis was founded on the expectation that you'd give all your time to the new enterprise. Why, yes, of course, Mr. Ford. Very well. In the circumstances, your business and your services would hardly be worth that amount to me. I think we shall have to lower your percentage. But, my dear Mr. Ford, you you don't understand. I think I do. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and play bridge. Oh, good heavens. I'm sunk. Dulcie! Dulcie! Here, in the living room. Oh, Gordon, I've got news for you. Now, wait a minute, Dulcie. I want but to... But it can't wait, dear. I must tell you. Dulcie, please. Listen, Mrs. Forbes just told me that Mr. Forbes never plays bridge. Well, what of it? What of it? What of it? Why, Gordon, dear, don't you see? He's out there now, ready to play. That means he likes us. He likes us, Gordon. And everything's going to be wonderful. I can feel it in my bones. to the Lux Radio Theater's production of Dulcie, starring Zesu Pitts and featuring Gene Lockhart. Now in the brief intermission before Act Two, Mr. Miller. Tired businessman, this is for you. Your name, we'll say, is Jones, and your office life is hectic. Important meetings. Now, gentlemen, I see only one way out. People to be interviewed. Mr. Jones is busy now. Will you wait, sir? That goes on the whole day long. Well, you like being busy, but when night comes, you're tired. You need new energy, and I'm going to tell you how to get it. Drop yourself in a good warm bath. Lather yourself head to foot with Lux Toilet Soap, and just relax. Man, do you feel comfortable. You won't believe how comfortable until you try it. Lux Toilet Soap's lather is active. It goes down into every pore, frees skin of dust, dirt, stale perspiration, makes you feel alive. Skin that's really clean feels good. A Lux toilet soap bath will prep you up all right. It's the many, many letters that we get from men that convince us Lux toilet soap is a soap men like. Lather? That's the keynote of those letters. Lather that's rich, that's quick, that's thorough. Why don't you try it tonight? After carefully patching up the damage done by his well-meaning but blundering Dulcie, Gordon was able to convince Mr. Forbes that his percentage in the merger should not be lowered. But Dulcie, in her good-natured fashion, is going blindly on with her scheming, totally unaware of the approaching disaster. It is a few hours after dinner, and she is seated in the living room with Mrs. Forbes, all aglow with what she believes to be the marvelous success of her plan. Isn't he wonderful? Who, Mrs. Smith? Vincent Leach. Oh, you thought I meant Mr. Van Dyke, didn't you? Well, I didn't know. Now, now, it doesn't take a brick wall to fall on me. But seriously, Vincent's mad about Angela. Do you really think so? He hasn't taken his eyes off her since he arrived. And they've been out in the garden together for hours. I tell you, they're in love. And I wouldn't be surprised if they became engaged right here in my house. But you're, you're sure it's all right? 
positive that Mr. Leach is... Of course uh, I am. He's just the man for Angela. Oh, I hope so. Because Mr. Forbes said this afternoon that he... Oh, you don't have to worry about Mr. Forbes. I think he's beginning to like Vincent, too. Do you? Don't you? Didn't you see his face? So tense and excited while Mr. Leach was telling us the story of his new picture? Yes, my husband did look a little tense. Oh, wasn't it nice, Mr. Leach telling his story and Mr. Van Dyke playing the piano at the same time? It was really thrilling. He plays awfully well. Yes, when he isn't looking at you, my dear. Who? Mr. Van Dyke, of course. Anybody oh. can see he's attracted to you. In a oh. nice, gentlemanly way, I mean. He's such a gentleman and so wonderfully rich. He was telling me at dinner about his diamond mines in Africa. Can you imagine diamond mines? He seems to have a huge number of interests. Well, the Van Dykes, my dear. You know, the Van Dykes, captains of industry, every one of them. No, no, Angela. <laughs> well, if it isn't my two little black sheep, where have you been all evening? We've been walking in the garden. <laughs> you don't have to explain to me, Angela. I understand. Oh, oh Mrs. Smith. Oh, it was beautiful out there. Have you seen the garden, Mrs. Forbes? No, no, not yet, Mr. Lee. Oh, then you must have Mr. Forbes take you out at once. The moonlight on the roses is a vision of fairyland, a magical dream out of Arabian nights. Well, you make it sound very attractive, Mr. Lee. Why don't you find Father and ask him to take you? Perhaps I shall. Will you excuse me, Mrs. Smith? Of course, my dear. I'll be back presently. Well, my children, oh, Mrs. Smith, we've got to speak to you. Yes, we want you to help us. Why, my dears, what's wrong? Mrs. Smith, Vincent and I are, are in love. In love? In love. Oh, Angela. Angela, uh, Mr. Leach. Oh, if this isn't the most wonderful thing I've ever heard. It's wonderful, that's all I can say. I'm so happy I could cry. Good news affects me that way. Oh, Vincent. I may call you Vincent now, may I? Of course. Mrs. Smith. We're going to need your help. Yes, darling, of course. Now, now it's a secret, and you must promise that you won't tell anyone. Why, well, no, I wouldn't tell a soul. Well, you're going to elope. Elope? Tonight. Tonight? You mean, uh, run away and get married? Yes. Why, why, that's wonderful. That's just marvelous. Now, remember, you're not to tell a soul. Oh, no, I wouldn't tell anybody. Well, how soon are you going? Just as soon as we can, aren't we, Vincent? Yes, if we can get away. Of course, of course. My, I'm so excited, I don't know what to do next. Oh, dear, I'm just all of a twitter. Hello. Oh, Willie, Willie, come here. What's up, sis? Vincent and Angela are going to a loan. Oh, oh, Mrs. Smith, and you promised you wouldn't tell. Oh, oh dear, just popped before I knew it. But, uh, but Willie won't tell anybody. You won't tell anybody, will you, Willie? You're going to elope, Angela. With Mr. Leach? Yes. Oh. No, no, I won't tell so. Uh, there you are, Angela. Thank you, Bill. Where are you going to elope to? What? I... Well, where were we, Vincent? Uh, I haven't thought about it just yet. Well, there's lots of places. How about a marriage license? Well, I don't know. I... Vincent? Well, I thought we might find some place. You want to take your father's car, Angela? Yes. You could have had ours that I broke it yesterday. Uh, Willie, you could help them some way, couldn't you? You know, where to get a license and everything. Why, uh... Yes. See, that's just why I told you. I live in Southport. I know the borough clerk. We could go to his house and get a license. Oh, that would be lovely. Yes. 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 Then I could drive you wherever you want to go and bring the car back. You see, everything is working out beautifully. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll... Well, what do you suggest, Willie? Is everything ready? We just have to get our bags. They just have to get their bags. Vincent, now you go out and find Mrs. Forbes and tell her, and then we'll all meet in the garage. I'll go up and get Angela's things for her. Uh, but, but wait a minute. Hurry, Vincent. The least speed, the more haste, or something, you know. Uh, all right. I'll see you in the garage in about three minutes. Now, don't keep me waiting. We won't. Uh, well, now that's settled. I'll go up and get the things. I'll go with you. Oh, no, I'll bring everything out to the garage. If anybody sees me, they won't suspect. You know, I'm so excited. It's just like the things of old, when nights were bold. Well, all ready for the elopement, Angela? Bill Parker. I think, I think you're just horrid. Oh, you don't mean it. I'm really being very good to you, helping you out this way. Well, well you don't have to be so happy about it. After all, we, well, we are old friends. Well, that's why I'm glad. You, you're glad, aren't you? That has nothing to do with it. Yes, of course I am. Oh, you're, you're just impossible. Angela, you once told me I'd never change. You were right. I never have changed. Especially about you, Angela. Oh, I don't care whether you have or not. I think you're, you're positively hopeless. <sighs> oh, 
good evening, Mr. Huh? Farr. Oh, uh, good evening. Have you seen my wife? Why, no, not recently. The butler told me she was looking for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, here she is. Uh. Oh, Charlie, where have you been? I wanted you to go out in the garden with me. In the... Is that all? Well, I don't want to. Will you excuse me, won't you? I have rather an important engagement. All right, go ahead. Thank you. All the places I've ever been in. Charlie, huh? what's the matter? You look terribly upset about something. Yes, well, I am upset. Has anything happened? No, but if I don't get out of this house, something will happen. That woman is enough to drive a man crazy. But Charlie, dear... Don't Charlie, dear me. You don't give a darn anyhow. You just go ahead carrying on with that fellow Van Dyke. But, sweetheart... Oh, you're... I saw the way that woman fixed it up for you. And Angela. Where's Angela? Well, I, I don't know, dear. Oh, out gallivanting with that moving picture and income poop, I suppose. More of that woman's work. Do you mean Mr. Leach? Yes, I mean Mr. Leach. And I want to tell you something. If I find this leech person actually making love to Angela, I'm going to raise blazes. I've had nothing but a series of, of aggravations and annoyances ever since I came into the house. Eleanor, I can truthfully say that in all my 53 years, I, I've never spent an unhappier evening. Oh, Charlie. Yes, but uh, I'm not going to spend another. I'm not going to stay here and play golf and breathe. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going home. Charlie. I'm going upstairs and pack right now. Charlie, you can't do that. Maybe I can't, but I'm going to. You can stay here with Van Dyke. And watch Angela, carrying on with that leech person. But you mark my words. If anything comes of this, if Angela and that fool are infatuated with each other, if they do anything silly, I never want to see either you or her again. Oh, Mr. Oh. Ford, here you are. Yes, but I won't be for long. I'm going to my room, Mrs. Smith. That's right. Get a good night's rest, Mr. Forbes, so you'll feel good when we go horseback riding tomorrow. Horseback riding? Horse? Oh, Mrs. Forbes, did you hear the news? Did Vincent tell you? No. What news are you talking about? Vincent and Angela, they've eloped. Eloped? Oh, good heavens. They left just a minute ago. Isn't it wonderful? No. A what? It's terrible. Charles will never speak to me again. It's all your fault. That and Mr. Van Dyke and everything. Charles would never have talked to me the way he did if it hadn't been for you. He's never talked to me like that before. Why, Mrs. Forbes, dear, you're tired. No, I'm not. I'm just mad, that's all, and it's all your fault. If my husband ever knows that I knew they were falling in love and didn't stop it, why, he'll... He... Oh, I don't know what he'll do. There, there, dear. Why, he won't do anything. Oh. He'll be the first to congratulate them. Oh, oh, Mrs. Forbes and Mrs. Smith. Oh, Mr. Van Dyke. I've been looking for... Oh, oh. Oh, I beg your pardon. Am I intruding? Oh, no, it's quite all right, Mr. Van Dyke. <sighs> Mrs. Forbes, well, she doesn't feel so well, that's all. Oh. A headache, isn't it, dear? Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. Dulcie! Dulcie! Oh, yes, Gordon, dear. What is it? Dulcie, what in the name of heaven has happened? Why, nothing, Gordon. Nothing at all. Then why did Mr. Forbes just tell me that he wasn't sure whether he wanted me in on the merger or not? He said that? Yes, and what's more, he's leaving the house in a few minutes. What? Why, well, he can't leave without me. Charlie! Charlie, wait for me! Wait for Eleanor. Gordon, I can't believe it. The merger can't be off. Why should it be? I haven't done anything wrong, have I? I don't know what you've done, but it looks like you've ruined me. I've got to try and stop him. It means everything to me. Oh, dear me. Oh, Mrs. Smith. Oh, Mr. Van Dyke, isn't it awful? Isn't it terrible? <laughs> Nothing is so terrible that it can't be mended. But the merger, it may be all off. I don't know what Gordon will do. Now, just a minute, Mrs. Smith. As I understand it, it was a merger which would have taken in about 50% of the jewelry trade. Yes, I think so. And now Mr. Forbes is on the verge of leaving your husband out of the merger. Is that right? Yes. Hmm. Mrs. Smith, I like your husband very much. Oh, do you? Would he be willing to get up his own merger? One bigger than Mr. Forbes ever dreamed of? Why, what do you mean? Why doesn't he beat Mr. Forbes at his own game? Why, I never thought of that, but uh, Mr. Forbes has all the money and Gordy hasn't any. That's it, exactly. Now, I've always wanted to take a little flyer in the jewelry business. Suppose I finance Mr. Smith. Suppose he and I set out to beat Mr. Forbes together. How would that be? A B? B? Why, it would be magnificent. It would be... Do you really mean it? I do. I'll put up my check the moment your husband says the word. Oh, Mr. Van Dyke. You, you've made me the happiest woman in all the world. Oh. You'll let me break the news to him, won't you? Why, of course, if you wish it. And to think I introduced you to him. Now, what will he think of me? Dulcie, did you see Mr. Forbes? Did he come back in here? Uh, no, Gordon, he didn't. Good heavens, I can't find him anywhere. Uh, wait, Gordon, come back here. Dulcie, don't stop me now. Come I... back here, I've got to speak to you. Well, what is it, Dulcie, quick. Uh, Gordon, 
How would you like to have Mr. Van Dyke for a partner? A partner in what? Golf? No, in business, Mr. Smith. Huh? Yes. How would you like to go in business with him and leave Mr. Forbes out of it? Get up a bigger merger than Mr. Forbes ever dreamed of. Because because you'd have all the money you wanted. Mr. Van Dyke said so. He, you, you said so? Yes, Mr. Smith. Your wife has interested me very much in this proposition. And I told her that I'm willing to finance a combination to beat Forbes and his crowd with you at the head of it. He's just waiting for you to say the word, darling. I, I, I can't believe it. But it's true. It is, dear. Why, it's, it's too good to be true. I could be rid of Forbes and put my business in for what it's worth. Yes. Oh, Gordon. I I can really do big things. Exactly, Mr. Smith. Oh, oh, oh listen. It's Mr. and Mrs. Forbes, and they're fighting. But, Charlie, dear, calm down a little and don't fly off the handle. Handle? Handle, madam? Do you realize what is it? Ah, uh, Mrs. Smith. Yes, Mr. Forbes. My wife has just informed me that my daughter and that, that leech have a look. What? Why, Dulcie, is this true? Yes, you see, Mr. It Ford. wasn't my fault, Charles, honestly. Be quiet, Eleanor. Mrs. Smith, this is the last straw. I've stood for a great deal, but I will not stand for my daughter marrying a, a nincompoop. Now, wait, Mr. Ford. No. I'm sure this can be fixed up in some way. Uh, yes, of course it can. Please, I don't care to discuss it. I'm leaving immediately. Oh, but you can. Oh, I can't, eh? Uh, no, you see, Angela and Vincent, they eloped in your car. They, they eloped in my car? Oh, my. And now, Mr. Forbes, there's no use getting all oh. upset. And you'll have to stay the night so we might just as oh. well be friendly. Of course. And we could talk the whole thing over yeah, in the morning. Yeah. Well, there's nothing to talk over. Smith, in the circumstances, I don't see how we can possibly go into business together. I don't like your method. The merger is off. But, Mr. Forbes... I'm sorry. That's my decision. Good night, Mr. Smith. Wait, Mr. Forbes. Before you freeze me out, I want to tell you that Mr. Van Dyke here has agreed to back me in an independent merger. Eh? A bigger one than yours. What? Yes, Mr. Forbes, I have. But I... I you can't... see? Now am I still out? Yes, Mr. Smith, you are. Very well. Then I'm going to line up with Van Dyke and fight you. I'll fight you till one of us is forced to the wall. Uh, but... I'll teach you to take advantage of me. Advantage? Who took advantage you of you? You did. By offering me less than you knew my business was worth. Uh, you uh... knew I was in a hole, and now you're going to get just what you desire. Me, Rob. You're going to get a first-rate licking. Oh, Gordy. Yeah. All right. Make your fine speeches. But when you talk about fighting, don't forget that I can fight too. And before you win, you're going to know that you've been in a real fight. Remember that. Eleanor, come along. Yes, Charlie, I'm coming. Mr. Smith, allow me to congratulate you. You told him was what was what straight from the shoulder. Thank you, Mr. Van Dyke. And I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. Of course we will. And now I'll have to say good night. I've had a very hard day at my broker's, Good and I'm night. completely exhausted. Uh, Good night, Mrs. Smith. Good night, and thank you. Oh, not at all. Oh, Gordon, you were wonderful. I feel like a new man. You see, I was of some use after all. Use? You were magnificent. The best, the finest little wife in the world. I'm going to be Forbes, dear. I'm going to succeed. And I'll owe it all to you. Oh, wasn't it lucky my finding, Mr. Van Dyke? Lucky? It was an inspiration. And I am a real helpmate. My darling. My Gordy. Oh. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Smith. Oh, Henry, you startled me. Uh, what is it? Uh, there's a gentleman here, madam. He wants to see you right away. Well, show him in, Henry. Yeah, very good, madam. I wonder who that can be. Oh, just a neighbor, probably. In here, sir. Thank you. Oh. Good evening, Mrs. Smith. Good evening. Uh, I'm I'm sorry to intrude like this, but it's rather important. My name is Patterson, Blair Patterson. Oh, the attorney. Yes, I was referred to you by Mrs. Kennedy. Oh, across the street. Uh, yes. She said you had guests. I just wondered if among them there is a Mr. Morgan. Morgan? Why, no. Well, uh, is there a Mr. Ford? No, he's not here either. Uh, Mr. Vanderbilt? Vanderbilt? No. Hmm. Well, now, uh, let me ask you. Is one of your guests tall, good-looking, plays the piano, interested in various uh, investments? Oh, you mean Skylar Van Dyke. Skylar Van Dyke. Yes, I think I do mean Skylar Van Dyke. I'm his cousin. I've come for him. Come for him? Yes. His real name is Patterson, Horace Patterson. He has an hallucination that he's a millionaire. Oh! Uh, but I assure you, he's perfectly harmless. What? You mean he's crazy? Uh, yes, a little. Darcy, he's crazy. Skylar Van Dyke's crazy. And then the company that he was, I mean, the merger, the merger that he had the money for, 
Then the merger... I mean, it won't. It can't. Oh, dear me. You are listening to the Lux Radio Theater's presentation of Dulcie, starring Zazu Pitts and featuring Gene Lockhart. In a moment, we're going on with Act Three. But first, Mr. Miller. No girl wants a skin that's dull and coarse, its beauty marred by enlarged pores and tiny blemishes. Yet many a girl risks these distressing signs of cosmetic skin just because she doesn't know these few important facts about correct skin care. A skin to be lovely must be thoroughly clean. Dust, dirt, and stale rouge and powder left choking the pores causes unattractive cosmetic skin. There's an easy way to guard against that danger. Use rouge and powder all you like. But before you put on fresh makeup, and always before you go to bed at night, remove all stale makeup with Lux Toilet Soap. This is a simple beauty treatment, but it brings results. Here's why. Lux Toilet Soap's lather is active. It penetrates pour deep. Make you sure not a trace of dust, dirt, stale rouge, or powder remains to clog your pores. You want to protect your skin, keep it lovely? Why not try this gentle, safe complexion care that's made to do it? You are listening to the Lux Radio Theater's presentation of Dulcie, starring Zazu Pitts and featuring Gene Lockhart. The next act will be presented in just a moment. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. W.A.B.C. New York. It is early the next morning, and Blair Patterson, the lawyer who brought the calamitous news of Mr. Van Dyke's hallucinations, is in the living room, straightening out his rumpled clothes after spending the night on the sofa. Down the stairs comes the happily demented Mr. Van Dyke, whistling cheerfully. Hello, Horace. What? Why, Blair. What in the world are you doing here? Oh, I just dropped in to say hello. Oh, you can't fool me. You've come to make me leave. That's what you've done. Oh, no. Well, that is, unless you really want to. Well, it's very embarrassing, Blair. Well, if it's embarrassing for you, what do you think it is for me? I have a law practice to attend to. I'm getting a little tired of these excursions. Oh, I wish you'd leave me alone. At least a half a dozen times during the past few years, you've interrupted me in business negotiations that were exceedingly interesting. Have you been up to something here, Horace? (laughs) Well, yes. I've been representing my Van Dyke interests. We had all sorts of wonderful things planned. Why, my share alone would have been eight and a half million. Besides, we were going to play golf and go horseback riding, and I love horses. Horace, now, how many times have I told you that I represent the Van Dyke interests? Well, now, you just let me handle it. You come back to town with me, and we'll talk it over, huh? I I can't leave now. I'm sorry, Horace, but you know our agreement. Unless you do as I say, I'll never go through with that $200 million airplane company of ours. Oh, well, all right then, Blair. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Smith. Uh, How do you feel this morning, Mr. Van Dyke? Very melancholy. I'm afraid I must go back to town. Oh, well, that's too bad. Still, it's all for the best. You must have some breakfast first, though. Oh, thank you. I'll go have it right away. It, it's hard to do high finance on an empty stomach. You can have breakfast, Candy, Mr. Patterson. Why, yes, of course. I had some soft-boiled eggs prepared for him and some soft milk toast. All very soft, you know. Is that all right? <laughs> yes, I, I think that will be very nice, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Oh, don't mention it, Mr. Patterson. Oh, hello, Gordon, darling. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Patterson. Good morning, Mr. Smith. 
Have you seen your cousin? Yes, and we had quite a talk. Oh, by the way, you haven't mentioned anything to your guests, have you? I, I mean, you know, it would be rather embarrassing if... Oh, no, nobody knows a thing. So far as they know, he's Skylar Van Dyke himself. Well, now, that's fine. Thank you very much. And now I, I think I'd better go and keep an eye on him. <laughs> you never can tell what big merge we'll attempt next. Excuse me, Mrs. Smith. Oh, yes, certainly. Dulcie. Yes, dear. Now, Dulcie, I want to speak to you. Of course. What about, darling? What about? My dear girl, do you realize what has happened? Well, I don't know. I think so. Oh, Gordy, I didn't mean to... Now, now, wait. You must listen quietly, dear, until I finish. Yes, darling. The time has come when I must speak frankly. Do you know what Forbes is going to say to me when he learns who Van Dyke really is? No. He's going to laugh in my face and tell me that my factory and my services are of no use to him. Mr. Forbes thinks he's been made a fool of, and he's right. The success of my business depended entirely upon him. It was me again. It was me, as usual. Oh, dear, how will it all end? Forbes will probably force me out of business. Then I'll have to start in all over again, without without a cent. And without me. Oh, Dulcie, I, I love you. I, I'll always love you. But, but you're like a child. You don't stop to think. I guess I don't, Gordon. I only think I think. Uh, darling, uh, I'll let you go if you want me to. I'm just all wrong. I'm a false note. Oh. I always wondered how I was able to make a man like you care for me. It seems so absurd for a man like you ever to love a false note. Dulcie, you're not a false note. You're a melody, a whole tune. But, uh, oh, I, I don't know what to do. I don't think I can reform. No, I suppose not. But maybe, maybe if I made out a budget of things not to do, you know, like the one we had for the household expenses. Oh, I'm afraid that wouldn't do much good. I could make another promise, one that would take in everything. Uh, dearest, if you'll let me, I'll promise that I'll never interfere with your business affairs again. I'll change completely. I'll revolutionize myself. Oh, Dulcie, I don't want you to change. I love you just as you are. I simply want you to let me handle my own affairs in my own way. Now, if you can promise to do that... Oh, oh yes, yes, Gordy. I promise, and I'll keep it, I will. Thank you, dear. I'm sure you will. I will, I will. And furthermore, I'll do everything in my power to repair the damage I've already done. What? Uh, now, now, wait. Yes, about Mr. Forbes. I'll go to him and tell him how sorry I am and see if there isn't something I can do. Now, that, now, Dulcie, listen to me. Be careful, darling. Here he is now. <laughs> good morning. Oh, good morning. good morning, Mr. Forbes. Did you sleep well? Sleep well? I did not. I'm sorry to bother you at this time. But it's extremely important that I get back to town immediately. Can I get a car anywhere in this village? I'm afraid you can't. Hmm? I mean, there aren't any cars to be had. It's, it's impossible. What? Oh, no, it isn't. I can uh, get him one right it... away. I'll go and phone Kelly. Kelly always has a car ready. Dulcie, come back here. It's all right, darling. I'll do it. No trouble at all. Oh. Uh, there, there seems to be a difference of opinion about the car, Mr. Smith. Well, uh, yes. Well, I, I didn't think of Kelly. I mean... Oh, what's the difference? Excuse me, Mr. Smith, but have you seen... Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone else was All here. right, Mr. Patterson. This is Mr. Forbes. Mr. Forbes, Mr. Patterson. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Patterson? I've heard of you. Oh, yes? Thank you. Uh, if you gentlemen will pardon me for a moment, I uh, I want to see my wife. The pleasure is yours. I'll see you before you go. Well, Mr. Patterson, I... Uh, uh, did you say you were looking for someone? Oh, yes, I... Uh... Oh, but it's all right. It doesn't matter. I didn't know you were a friend of Smith's. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that is, I... Uh-huh. Uh, came down this morning, did you? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Just got in. Beautiful country. Yes, isn't it? The Van Dyke interests seem to keep you pretty busy, Mr. Patterson. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed they do. Must be something pretty important, too, for him to send for you at this hour. Well, just a little matter of business, which he thought uh, advisable. Ah, uh, I see. It, uh, it isn't about the artificial jewelry merger, is it? Uh, well, now, uh, yes, it might be. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. You know, I was concerned in that deal myself up until last night, but I turned it down. Mm. Now, however, when I see that a big financier is really interested, well, I I may reconsider. Well, now, uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, Mr. Patterson. 
Yes, Mrs. Smith? Mr. Van Dyke is looking for you. Oh, yes. Well, I'll go and see if I can find him. Excuse me. Oh, Mr. Forbes, they haven't any more cars at Kelly's. They said they'd have one later. Yes, tomorrow, perhaps. And, Mr. Forbes, I'm so sorry about the elopement and everything. It's quite all right, Mrs. Smith, quite all right. And I'm sorry about the business deal, too, but it's going to come out all right. Oh, is it? Yes, Gordon will go in with you after all. Because Mr. Van Dyke, well, Mr. Van Dyke just isn't Mr. Van Dyke. What? What's that? No, he has something wrong in his head. Huh? He only thinks he's a millionaire. Oh, uh, I see. So everything's all right now, isn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, splendid. Dulcie. Oh, come in, Gordon. I've just fixed it with Mr. Forbes. Everything's fine. Dulcie, what in the name of heaven did you say? A great deal, Mr. Smith. She told me about Mr. Van Dyke. What? Did you? Of course, dear. I told you I'd straighten everything out. Uh, you certainly have. Well, Mr. Forbes, then, the, uh, of course, you know that, uh, that Mr. Van Dyke... Yes, I know. But it won't work, Smith. It won't work. What's that? Oh, I'll admit that Mrs. Smith is a clever woman. A very clever woman. But it won't work. <laughs> a Van Dyke, not a Van Dyke. <laughs> but Mr. Forbes, he really isn't. Shut up, Dulcie. I might have believed it if I hadn't met Blair Patterson here. But I happen to know that Patterson represents the Van Dyke interest. And a man like him doesn't pop up in a, in a place like this to talk to a man with hallucination. But Mr. Forbes... Shut up! Yes, dear. I, I saw through the whole thing at once, Mr. Smith. You began to be sorry. You, you, you told me about the Van Dyke merger. And you wanted to throw me off the trail, eh? <laughs> well, you can't do it. I know it's in the wind, and I'm going to hold you to our agreement. Agreement? Yes, well, it uh, was a verbal agreement, but, but as a gentleman, you agreed to come in for 16 and two-thirds percent. And you've got to do it. You've got to come in with me. Oh. Oh, well, all right, Mr. Forbes. I guess you win. There, Gordon. Didn't I tell you I'd fix it for you? Golly! Charlie, where are you? Here I am, Eleanor. What do you want? Oh, Charlie. Charlie, she's here. Who? Who's here? Angela. She's come back. Oh, eh? how nice. Angela? Well, well, I, I want to speak to her. Hello, Father. Come here. Where have you been? Oh, oh Father, what a question. Angela, dear, are you, are you married? Of course I am. Oh, she's married. She's married. Isn't it wonderful? So, <laughs> you, you did it, eh? <laughs> Where is your husband? Yes, Angela. Where is your husband? Good morning, everybody. Hello, Bill. Oh, hello, Willie. So where is Vincent? Where is Mr. Lee? Angela, tell us. I don't know, Mrs. Smith. You don't know. Well, isn't that fine? Oh, Willie, for heaven's sake, what happened to him? Well, it's a long story, Dulcie. Look here, young man. You helped to arrange this wedding, didn't you? Yes, Mr. Ford. Well, don't you know where the groom is? Sure. I'm the groom. Uh, what? Willie. Willie. Say that again. Certainly. I am the groom. Well, okay, Angela, I don't know if you wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Angela, tell us about it. How did it happen? Oh, it was the most romantic thing in the world. She was just kidnapped me, that's all. Oh, Bill. Angela. Just a second. Young man, are you a genius? No, sir. Are you a writer of any kind, sort of description? <laughs> I should say not. Uh. He's a broker, Mr. Forbes. Isn't it wonderful? That makes everything all right, doesn't it? Well... But about Mr. Leach, Willie, where is he? I don't know. Well, we, we started from here all right last night. But down the road a piece, I suddenly thought my taillight was out. Mr. Leach was kind enough to investigate for me, and, uh, uh, well, somehow or other, the, the car just started off without him. You mean that the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Young fellow... <laughs> You're all right. And darn clever, too. <laughs> well, he's my brother, Mr. Forbes. Huh? What would you expect? Oh. And wasn't it wonderful that I happened to invite him down here for this party? Oh, so... So this is what you were working for underneath all that leech business. What? Well, yes and no. I'm afraid you don't understand women very well, Mr. Forbes. Uh, 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 I guess I don't. But isn't it marvelous? Angela, a married woman, and Willie, a married man. I could almost cry. Uh, but, Mr. Forbes, huh? about the merger, you know, 16 and two-thirds percent isn't very much for a relation, a brother-in-law. Well, uh, I wasn't very generous about that deal, or, or very just either. Smith? Yes, sir. What do you say to coming in with me for 20%? 20? Oh, Mr. Smith. All right, all right, then. If that's not enough, we'll make it 25. 25? Now, she be quiet. 25 satisfies me. Does it? Well, if it satisfies you, Gordon, it satisfies me. I didn't mean to interfere, dear, and I never will again. You can rely on me. 
You know the old saying, a burnt child dreads the fire. Well, I've been bitten. I mean burnt. And once bitten, it's twice cautious. I mean, oh, well, <laughs> you get the idea, don't you, darling? <laughs> You've just heard the Lux Radio Theater's presentation of Dulcie, starring Zesu Pitts and featuring Gene Lockhart. In just a moment, we want you to meet Miss Pitts. Each week, these Lux Radio Theater presentations are brought to you by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap. It's the beauty care that famous stars of stage and screen and thousands of women like you use because they've found it keeps skin lovely. Now, may we introduce Miss Pitts. Miss Pitts, would you mind telling us if Zazu is your real name? Oh, yes. Mother did it to me. She wanted to name me for my two aunts, Eliza and Susan. So she combined the two names into one. The Z-A from Eliza and the S-U from Susan, which makes Zazu. Oh, well, Zazu. I believe that Eric von Stroheim once characterized you as one of the greatest tragedians of the screen. Why haven't you appeared in more tragic parts? Well, I did a tragic role in a picture called Greed, but then I began doing farce, and since then I've been so associated with comedy that I guess people would think it was funny if I went tragic on them. Well, I think you practically owe it to your audience to keep on making them laugh. We'd like to know a few of your secrets. For instance, uh, how you came by that funny gesture. You know, the one where you flutter your hands to your shoulders. You mean, oh, dear. <laughs> yes, that's the one. <laughs> What made you think of that? Well, it just happened. Now, Miss Pitts, as one of the loveliest women in Hollywood... Oh, my, Mr. Garrick. You say such lovely things. Only when they're true. Most people don't know how charming you are when you're you. You fool them on the screen with that confused way you wear your hair and clothes. But even then, you can't disguise your lovely complexion. I want to tell you how glad we are you're among the lovely stars who uses Lux Toilet Soap. You know, I have a very special reason for using Lux Toilet Soap. I think one charm every woman should and can have is a nice, clear skin. Lux Toilet Soap has kept my complexion nice, so I'm going to keep right on using it. Thank you very much, Miss Pitts. We're mighty glad to have had you in the Lux Radio Theater. And I also want to thank Jean Lockhart and the members of the supporting class, which included Leslie Adams, who played Gordon Smith, Mary Mason as Angela... James Marr as Blair Patterson, Clifford Walker as Henry, Stuart Fox as Vincent Leach, Harold Vermeer as Skylar Van Dyke, Donald Foster as Willie, and Mary Newton as Mrs. Forbes. Next week, the Lux Radio Theater will star Charles Butterworth, that mild, quiet, and very amusing fellow who never seems to understand why he's always in hot water. You've laughed at him in Bulldog Drummond Strikes Back, and in Forsaking All Others, and countless other movies. And you'll have still more laughs when Charles Butterworth appears in the Lux Radio Theater in the Milky Way. It's an hilarious comedy about a gentle, retiring milkman who's forced to become a prize fighter. He can't fight, but he does know exactly when and how to duck. So don't fail to be in the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night to hear the Milky Way starring Charles Butterworth. Until then, this is Douglas Garrick bidding you all good evening. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>